zero to six, so let's just see. I'll tell you, I know this guy looks like he's beating me right now, but it feels quick. And that's where this car definitely beats the, the M56. And yeah, I guess there's your intro. Two thousand and twenty Nissan Rogue. I had the opportunity to have this car for a day. I got it from a rental company, and in typical fashion, um, I mean, I've been known as Mr. Infinity V8, or rather Nissan V8 sedan. And so, every once in a while, whenever I get an opportunity to test anything or pit anything against it, I do try to compare. It's a little bit of an unfair comparison: Infinity M56 or M45 versus. A rental car whatever it is I get but sometimes you'd be surprised so I can tell you right off the bat the door opens a little different well I'm gonna do it twice oh I locked it unlock all the doors okay there you go feels tinny <laughs> Definitely feels different compared to the cars, but you know, it's it's a new car, so it's a 2020 So let's see what happens when you get in there. I'll try to do a review that you know objectively talks about things and I've considered uh, uh, a Rogue, let's let's put it like this being a Nissan guy if I were to get something family friendly a little more family friendly a Rogue is what I'd get and Actually, yesterday, because of what I was carrying, I had the uh, I had the chance, and I had actually reserved a minivan. But once I saw the rogues over there, I don't know why I hadn't thought about it. Like rental places are all made of rogues, you know, Nissans these days. <laughs> so I don't know why I didn't think about it. But I said, hey, let me test this out because it's something I've thought about. If I were to get a family hauler or something like that, a rogue is what I'd get. So by the way, right here, we need to talk about that height thing. If you don't like how high this thing opens, say you're a little shorter and you want it to be brought down a little, a little, a little lower, what you do is bring it down to whatever height you desire. All right, so some of the um, things that I've loved about Rogues are these. Um, I some time back I went to a Nissan dealer I went to dealerships Toyota Nissan Honda Hyundai and I was just looking around trying to see and see what everybody had just you know in case I were to buy something and I'll tell you the Rogue One because of utility and configurability wow that's awful because of everything you could do with the, with the stuff back here and hey check this out it actually comes with a spare tire like cars don't really come with spare wheels anymore right so the rogue won because of that and i'm trying to remember what do these do and why is this one loose okay hooks i guess so do you see how low the floor was this thing right here Kind of an odd review starting from the back right but I'll be returning this car soon so kind of get what you get <laughs> okay so this slot right here is where you used to maneuver this okay look at that the floor is now all even go down one more and boom lays a little lower I was I was glad to have that yesterday because I took advantage of that. I had my power washer in here and it, it couldn't stand just, you know, it was a little tight up there. It was actually touching so I was able to lower the floor just a little bit and boom, I was able to take advantage of that. So, but not only that, you can actually keep going, if I remember correctly, and actually but there's a shelf up here too. Look at that, that is pretty cool. And then this one here, this one that's, oh, I know what's up with this. That's what this hook was for. It's supposed to be held down there. But either someone got tired or just got, got to messing with it. Configurability. 
right? I mean, this is the whole purpose of a family vehicle. So, again, pardon me for starting the back, but I'll be going in and returning it. Look at that. You got charging ports in the back. I don't know what you'd be charging back there. There's usually decent spare stuff. Yep, it's right there. This is pretty good, you know? Configuration, configurability, and all that. The Nissan Rogue wins, and I really, I really love them for that. And you know, full flat uh, second row seats. Um, obviously, uh, I'll come back to this. And the seats, well, you got latch for you know for people with families again. Lowering this, the, uh, the second row seats, pretty easy. Just, just drop. And I think over there, I had enough room to scoot the seat all the way back and still be able to, to lower that. So 60-40 split, it's pretty cool. And you can actually do more. You can drop the center console by itself, can't you? Yes, you can. All right, so. Front seats. It's it's a comfortable area. I mean, you're not gonna feel you're not gonna feel like you're sitting in a Rolls Royce by any means, but it's a comfortable place to be. And unlike the other one, you actually have way more charging options. I mean, 2020 versus whatever else you had over there, and you have cloth seats, heated, heated, you know, high level, low level, and in here you have more charging ports. It is really. I, I like it. It's it's made for the modern family, and I'll come back to that point in a little bit. But yeah, let's 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 do this. Uh, should have gone to the other side so I can pop the, the hood. Oh, and you can close the trunk in many different ways. You could use a key fob. You could use this button here, and if you happen to be tall enough, I guess you could use this button here. Rear view camera. There is a button. Did you see the second button down there? This one here? Well, it's not going to do anything right now because of this. Okay, let's, let's go for it. Locks the car. Locks all the doors, right? Which is pretty cool. Sometimes, you know, use whichever door you have to, to operate the door. There you go. Unlock the doors. So you do have two buttons over there. Just be mindful of that. Then let's look under the hood. It's out of curiosity, really, because I mean, it's not really a comparison of V8 versus four cylinder engine, but yeah, there you go. 
everything's right there pretty accessible honestly uh, in the well not unfortunate in the eventuality that you have to come here and service your engine everything's gonna be right there pretty accessible so this is one place it definitely beats the the V8 because half the stuff to work on and it's right there all right cool so this is not much of a discussion here where oh there it is there's a support, a support rod so all right so shut this Perfect. Remember, you don't have to slam these things. Let's get inside now and the place that matters. Right, so you've seen the remote start already, but we could also just start it. All right, let's talk about driving impressions from here. One, it does not sound like the M56 by any means. I'll, I'll be honest with that. So, <clears throat> and it's understandable. I mean, it's a Let's do this. This one is all-wheel drive. And see that gauge over there? Whenever you get on the gas, and say you're going up a hill or something for acceleration purposes, you can see it switch from all-wheel drive. Th that's the front wheels. You have the rear wheels over there. And you can see power going to the to the rear. It's like reverse a Tessa, because it <laughs> it sends because the Tessas are usually a rear wheel drive, and then it sends power to the front as needed. Let's turn this off. This one sends power to the back as needed. Uh, inside here, it looks a little better than than the Ultima interiors I've been looking at, but it's still rubberized. I mean, it is 2020. We'll see how it ages with time. And uh, it beats the M56 in this. The rear view camera, well, let's do this first. That, it is really clear. I really don't understand why Nissan couldn't put better cameras in their Infiniti flagship sedan. After 20, 20, 2019, the cameras just looked crappy. So this is obviously much better. And I'll tell you, the, one, the funny thing about this one here, as you drive off the Bing CVT, it's funky because it doesn't slam into gear at all. It just, it's in gear, you know? And it has a very, very quick uh, reaction time. It's very responsive, like right now. So I've been able to kind of win a few stoplight championships just because of how fast this transmission is. The transmission, the seven-speed auto is a little laggy. And uh, as I said, this is where they, they beat the, the flagship sedan. Uh, the other thing, I've, I've already talked, to, talked about this, amenities, different charging ports, a lot of different things. The audio here is impeccable. It's quick, it connects really quick. And it's uh, the Bluetooth uh, speaking phone calls are really clear. Um, <clears throat> the audio connects really quickly, and there's a difference. Um, you, you, there are a few settings you can do here. Obviously, you can change your sound. You can do a few things. Bass and normally with my amps, I usually I can't max out the bass, and I'll still it will still sound good. The difference with this thing is that let, let, let's put it like this. I guess it's the difference between being in a movie theater versus being in a, uh, I guess, a hip hop concert. So here's an example. There's a song, um, let's say, you know, get low to the window, to the wall. This one right here, it's got bass. It sounds like to the window, to the wow. You know, it's, it's just boom, 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 boom. It's up there in the M. It's a little more like to the window, like boom, boom. You, you can hear the bass, you can make out the trebles, uh, you can make out the trebles as well, but the difference is that now the M is a little more refined and that you can hear to the window, to the wow. Like, it's a little more, there's a little better staging, sound staging, oh, by the way, uh, there you go. Uh, not automatic, I don't think that was automatic heat either, but that's heated, so. I don't need to, I don't I guess I touched that. So um, it's pretty quick because I could feel it in my seat, in my pants pretty, pretty, uh, pretty immediately. So there are a few things you can do here. I think it beats the M56 in that it connects quickly. 
doesn't lag, and it it is crisp. The sound, phone calls, that's kind of where it matters so much more to me. It is really crisp. So this one here, um, it, it did some goofy things. You know, when you drive a car for a whole day, that's a little different kind of test drive. Uh, I took it out of town and back, and a random... Uh, points like the screen would go blank completely blank it would keep playing music just go blank and then the other thing was uh, what happened it just said I wasn't connected to Bluetooth while still playing the song but for the most part it's okay I mean I'm, I'm trying to do the, whatever I can for a review <laughs> in as quick as possible in a short amount of uh, time as possible uh, auto headlights which are pretty cool pretty responsive uh, for a base ish model it's actually pretty good obviously this is how we open the trunk you know you could do that way did I remember to reset it for the higher high I can't remember but then just again close it <coughs> um, VDC off if you want to do some funky things and uh, this one here is focus this one here is your um, DCA I, I don't know what they call it here but this car has it you know uh, this you have to pop the, tr uh, the gas tank in this one sport mode which when you push that button this is what you see and it shifts, you know, shifts get held on a little longer. It's it's an okay car, honestly. I I wouldn't mind being stuck in this car. There were a few refinement issues where, depending on where the sun was, I would end up losing visibility in some part of the screen. The gauges are still visible, but the center part of the display, I would kind of lose it sometimes. To capture this while I could and this is not an exactly an infinity M versus a Nissan Rogue issue I think it's just more so how was the car made and what market is it made for right so with an M I never lose my screen at all but look at this I know it's just the middle just the display part but with the Sun uh, beside me and just driving normally you could lose a little bit of of your gauge cluster obviously the dials are still working and you can still see what's going on you can still see your speed I don't think you really lose that and right now I know on the screen that looks like it's disappearing but um, it's a little more dramatic than that because I can actually still see it over there so it's not it's not too bad in real life I can still see that gauge but it's just something I wanted to point out. There are few refinements, there are few issues that come up with these cars, right? Well, let's just drive it. I'm, I'm returning it. And as I said, this is uh, one of those interesting comparisons of, of weird opponent versus the Infinity M V8 sedans. Uh, for 2020, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly the smoothest thing out there. Uh, riding over these few dips over here does. Uh, it's it's a little rough. <laughs> my my nine year old or rather ten at this point I guess M56 rides way. Even the M45 rides way smoother. Um, oh, by the way, talking of which, uh, every time I needed to adjust the steering wheel, it's manual. Maybe the Rogue is, uh, the, uh, the Murano is a little different. And I haven't tested the Baby Rogue, but I know I, I was opening doors when I was at the dealership, and the Baby Rogue, the Rogue Sport, did not feel good at all. I was like, yeah, definitely don't want that. Um, so, and I guess these guys are making enough of a killing that you can make a Rogue and a Rogue Sport right to have both options um what else let's you know cruise control the usual stuff i can't remember if under D dca uh, driving dca what was it? driving something assist i forgot what the c was i can't remember if under that you could get um uh, distance control yeah, I guess that's kind of what it is. Uh, if you could get distance control from the guy in front of you, I, I didn't get to use that. But um, it wasn't exactly, you know, very, very... Uh, kind of poking into the road a little bit here. Yeah, it wasn't very 
it felt like a Nissan. Um, it felt very Nissan-like, like the cruise control just felt like whatever Nissan's been doing and if you don't need to use it, I wasn't going to use it. Plus it was raining a little bit so I just kind of decided to piece out of that. Um, yeah, I mean, let's go. As I said, they made enough of a killing from these cars and I can't blame them, you know. It seems like the, the Marquis brand, it's like, oh, Infinity Q70, well, you're going to buy it because you want an Infinity Q70. We have to impress uh, the people that actually drive, buy these cars, uh, our majority, and I think that's what Nissan was trying to go for for a while, market share, you know? Okay, let's try 0-6, to six. let's just see. opportunity I guess whoop and yeah I guess there's your intro <laughs> so I think for a while Nissan was going for market share and uh, so they obviously concentrate concentrated their efforts on things that people would be oh nice Tesla things that people uh, or rather concentrated their efforts on where most of their market would be you know the Altima's the Maxima's got a little bit of attention the the rogues the things that you rent obviously got more attention and that's why i'd say this one right here if you if you have a crappy rogue you're bound to lose way more market share than if you have a crappy q70 and they play their cards and it, today it, it's about what 22nd no it's like the 24th of april 2020 and uh, you look in the news and see what's happening to Nissan and Infiniti, but hey obviously they know how to sell a car better than I do I'll tell you I know this guy looks like he's beating me right now, but it feels quick. It just felt really Crappy by itself, you know well, it Just it seemed to not really be accelerating, but against other people in traffic normally just just stepping on it normally It's pretty quick um, refinement Noise, I, there's a lot of road noise coming in. It gets beaten hands down by the M for that. Um, as I said, the sound quality was good-ish. Uh, I just like that I'm able to connect a lot of things more easily. Um, compared to, again, the M56 and, you know, that point right there. This is, this is the question I usually ask myself, right? So I've already said, if I were to buy a a family-oriented vehicle, I tried to look in the Nissan group. The one thing that I was, that would usually hold me back was a CVT transmission. There were enough reports of people having failed CVT transmissions and Nissan basically saying, kick rocks, right? Um, but I love the Rogue. I think the Rogue is really well laid out. It's a really good bargain. Um, it It's something I would definitely consider if I were to do this. And... Um, you know, the CVT felt interesting, right? Obviously felt pretty interesting. You saw how accelerating, it just just changes uh, ratios and you just, you never jump back, you never kicked into gear, it never shifts back and forth. It just goes, right? That's, you, hey, suddenly we're going at speed. And uh, I would still consider it. Look at, look at this, by the way. Right now we're stuck at an, yet another light. So the question usually is, would you get an, um, you know, all, all, do you get an um, an M56 or this one? Will this one suffice? The question is this, do you need a V8? In reality, for most of us, I mean, how much time do we spend um, behind, you know, at lights or something like that? How much time do we spend stuck in traffic? I think the Rogue would be a little more enjoyable for such drives. You have way more amenities, and the V8 is nice for acceleration, or rather the M's are good for acceleration and handling dynamics, but most of your you, vehicle users are just sitting in traffic, or maybe you've already gotten up to speed, so at that point, does it matter? Does it matter how strong, whether you've got 420 horses or you've got 170, I'm guessing that's what this has, I can't really remember. Does it matter at that point? No, all that matters is that you're, you're at speed. Uh, the difference, though, I, and I've said this in the, in, the, uh, in the past, is the difference between 
uh, your luxury cruiser and your other cars that every car can get up to 80 miles an hour. The difference is how fast do you get to 80 and two, how well do you keep your composure when you're there? It was pretty stable, I'll tell you that. Nissan's been pretty good about the handling dynamics, but it was definitely not the M. But most people don't care about those things. Most people care about can I connect my Bluetooth? How many different ways can I charge my stuff? You know, that those kind of questions. And that's where um, this car definitely beats the the M56. But hey, it is 2020 and this is a 2020. What we should do is come back uh, come back to this car in 10, 11 years, like the M's, and then look at it again, right? But for now, it is pretty good. It, does, it gets the job done. Uh, one thing I really missed was the automatic uh, wipers because, yeah, I had to operate them myself. But, hey, first world problems, I just don't. Wipers is one of those things that I'm like, yeah, no, nope, I don't want to keep playing with those. But I think it's a, it's a worthy, worthy uh, contender, definitely. And keep watching this space. Maybe, maybe soon you'll be able to see a Rogue in place of one of the, or maybe alongside one of the Infinity V8s we have over there. All right? All right, well, till later, my friends. All right, well, so I'm back in my 12 year older vehicle. I'm back in my 2008 Infiniti M45. And, man, I liked the 2020 Rogue, but boy, wow, this feels good in here. Rogue. Feels really, really good in here. And, uh, you know, right from shutting the door and all that, it feels different. It feels like I'm in a different type of animal. Um, you know, something I just noticed looking over here, I did make that comment earlier that uh, rental car, rental lots are usually mostly Nissans, right? Altima, Altima, uh, that's a Toyota, and I don't know if it's there or not, Altima, Rogue that I just dropped off, Kicks over there. Uh, <laughs> Nissan definitely cemented their place. They wanted to be uh, market share and sh oh, there's yet another Ultima back there. They wanted market share and sure enough, they got market share. So, it, you know, but oh, the other thing I wanted to note was this, colors. Nissan seems to have offered way more colors in the, in the, you know, in the rental fleet models so to say and again it's one of those things that I don't blame them because if you want market share if you want to impress people if you want people to know that hey Nissan is a brand that doesn't play around you play your chances and you go where most people will see it which is the economy cars well he had another Nissan and this is the thing though it's like with a rogue or Murano well Murano's are kind of rare but with rogues you, you kind of blend in you know, you're, you're part of the pack. You just, you know, I, I rarely turn my head and say, ooh, yet another rogue, or yes, a red rogue. You know, it's just like, oh, I'm another rogue, huh? Okay, well, good enough, I guess. And um, this car has its benefits, as I've said. Uh, I, I don't want to sound like it's all poo-poo on, on these cars and this is a little bit of unfair of a, of a comparison because now I'm using the M45 and my M45 has the rear entertainment right so for for passengers it's cool well if you got passengers that watch DVDs right so these guys have DVD players and all this it's really nice right but I feel like the Rogue well, and I have to say this, the M56 doesn't even have the rear screen. All you have is a DVD screen up, up front. And so that's already a disadvantage. It's like, well, you better have uh, an iPad or something, some sort of a tablet to, uh, to entertain yourself. Then it comes to a question of how do I charge it? Yes, the M56 has a few more charging spots. The M45 has this one here, which doesn't work to charge my phone at all. And then it's got the rear one. The, the one behind the, the armrest over there. And that's the one that I use to, to charge my, my phone uh, in this case. The M56, I use that one to charge my phone. I know you can use the ones inside, but that's just how it works out. And, but I wanted to say this. So these ones are pretty cool in that they at least offer that and they have refined audio and things like that. But once again, the 2020 Rogue wins because 
even if everybody brought their own uh, gadget, their own entertainment screen, they have more places to, to charge them and way more, uh, more ways to connect them because, okay, so the M45 all up until 2010 did not have an, a Bluetooth audio, not from the factory, right? Uh, the 2011 M56, I've said, has audio, but it's, it's erratic. Sometimes it takes so long to, to actually connect, and when it connects, it's the audio is good, but phone conversations crappy. In the M45, M56, phone conversations are really, really horrible. So that's one thing that the the Rogue definitely beats them. And again, it, it might sound... It, it's not just a matter of comparing a 2020 vehicle to a 2008 or 2011. No, it's a comparison of the flagship sedan, like an S-Class versus a C-Class. There's a huge difference, right? You, you can definitely feel way differently going into those cars. But I guess the Japanese, since they have luxury brands and their consumer brands, they have to play the game a little differently, right? So, hey, that's that's all I have to say about that. Um, by the way, something I noticed that the Murano turned tighter in this parking spot. The Rogue, why do I keep calling it a Murano? It's a Rogue. Which also reminds me, uh, the, the Rogue was, the, the existence of a Rogue, not the ro Rogue Sport, the Rogue renders a Murano kinda useless. If you had a fully loaded Rogue, see it? See how crappy the... Well, this one's actually the better one. The M45 is the better one, but obviously now I'm looking at it thinking, I kind of like the one from 2020, but this one's better than the M56 uh, for daytime. Nighttime, oh, of course it's going to glitch when I'm recording, huh? Nighttime, the M M56 is pretty good, but um, no wonder it's been kind of funky. It's not, it's usually a lot clearer than that. So, um, we're back home. All M's, no more Rogue over here. But I'll tell you this, um, after driving it and uh, turning over there, I thought the M's were decent with regards to turning radius. Decent for, for a car this size, right? But the existence of the Rogue, and I'm not talking about the Rogue Sport, I'm talking about the, the full, full Rogue. Space, pretty good. Handling, good. If you get a fully loaded Rogue, it makes me wonder why does the Murano even exist? Because it's, well, you know, maybe I think seven to 10,000 more expensive. It's marginally larger, but you know, why, why, why exactly do you have a Murano? But they still sell, but I guess the Murano is, the Murano exists for the same reason that the Maxima exists while you can get a, you know, a big boy Altima. Right? Eh, oh well, that's all I thought about those cars.